The material in this two-part audio presentation is taken from lectures given by Dr. Gregory T. Lawton to students at the Blue Heron Academy of Healing Arts and Sciences and at continuing education programs sponsored by the American Medical Massage Association. Dr. Lawton bases his observations and comments regarding building a successful and profitable medical massage practice on over 30 years of clinical experience and business success. In this presentation, Dr. Lawton relates business success with personal achievement and self-transformation. Part 1 of this presentation, entitled Building a Successful and Profitable Practice, pertains to in-office patient care, education, and management. And Part 2, entitled Developing a Successful Cash Practice, to Developing an Affordable Fee Structure and In-Office Financial System that Actually Increases Your Patient Volume and Practice Income. We hope that you enjoy this presentation, which has been developed by the American Medical Massage Association for its members and their future success in practice. Building Your Vision for Success Most massage therapists want to be successful, but often simply don't know how to become successful. There really shouldn't be any excuses to fail, but what are yours? I often begin talks on massage business development with this silly statement. The reason why you fail is the reason why you fail. What I mean by this is that the reasons that we fail at certain things that we attempt to do is related to the dysfunctional personal baggage and negative self-characteristics that we carry around with us and impose upon anything that we try, no matter how much we sometimes want to succeed. It simply doesn't matter if we are building a massage practice or a fast food franchise. Our dysfunctional and negative self-characteristics will always pop up to sabotage even our best efforts unless we learn how to develop the necessary skills that allow us to overcome these self-defeating behaviors. When I provide seminars on business development, the common reaction that I get is, Oh, I already know that. Yes, but do you do it? People often think they know things they really don't know, or they would be doing them consistently. A question that I ask is, if you really want to be successful, why don't your actions reflect your claim? The simple fact is that most massage therapy practices fail, and that most fail for two very simple reasons. One, the therapist is almost impossible to reach for an appointment. Two, most massage therapists see the majority of patients for only one visit. Both of these two common reasons for therapist and practice failure are simply related to personal self-defeating behaviors. Many massage therapists do not maintain regular office hours, and even in an age of instant communication, they cannot be reached on the telephone. This is especially true for the relaxation or spa massage therapist who creates a massage experience and cannot take or handle phone calls during the treatment time or who maintains banker's hours. The medical massage therapist does not share this handicap. The second major reason for practice failure is related to patient management and education. The successful medical massage practice has a well-planned and executed patient management and education program in place that results in patient retention and multiple patient visits for ongoing therapy. The successful medical massage practice begins with a vision for success. What is your vision? Do you have one? Your vision should be the generative force that drives you and your practice forward. Your vision for success should contain your mission for service. Why are you a massage therapist? What do you want to accomplish for your patients? What are your personal success vital signs? Many therapists are hampered by self-defeating beliefs and behaviors that limit their vision for success, or worse yet, create a cycle of constant struggle and eventual failure. Successful therapists have a clear vision for success and a practice mission statement that defines their purpose and the reason why they practice massage therapy. Great massage practices have a great vision. What is your plan for success? Successful massage therapy practices are based on a coherent plan of operation. 
Every nuance of patient care and administration should be outlined in writing and flow charted from the first contact to follow-up care. It's a great day at Medical Massage Associates. Can we help you? The key to the successful medical massage practice is communication, communication, communication. Everything that you do interacting with the patient from talk to touch is communication. What are you communicating to your patients? Competency and confidence or something else? If you don't personify the value of what you do, why would your patients perceive a value in what you do? What is your philosophy of care? Do you have one? Are you a medical massage therapist or don't you know what you are? Without a specifically defined philosophy of care and strong professional values, you don't stand for anything, and patients perceive that. A strong philosophy of patient care with a clear definition of your patient care and treatment methods result in a powerful practice. You radiate confidence, and this combination becomes a magnetic center of attraction that draws success and patients to you. Building your success patient by patient. Phone contact. The successful medical massage practice begins with a vision. It is carried forward by the practice mission, but is supported and sustained by the practice plan. The practice plan is an outline of the patient care and management program that is executed by the therapist, group, and or administrative support staff. The patient plan is a cradle-to-grave, step-by-step, detailed procedural guide to patient care and patient management. If the patients are the bricks of the practice, the practice is built brick by brick, patient by patient, through execution of the practice plan. Although successful practices are built by patient referrals from other patients, the initial contact with a new patient begins with the first phone call. First of all, remove any and all impediments to receiving phone calls. Use an answering service with message forwarding to your pager or cell phone, or simply answer a phone yourself. But never, ever use voicemail or an answering machine to manage your calls. If you plan on building a practice using an answering machine or voicemail, just save yourself the effort and quit now. Potential patients always respond best to a real, live human voice. Get your patients used to the fact that you take phone calls, even during therapy. You are, after all, a medical massage therapist. Keep your cell phone or pager on vibrate and answer the calls as they come in. If you are with a patient, tell the person calling that you'll call them right back and get their number, unless you already have it on your caller ID. Develop the 20-minute rule in your office. All calls are returned within 20 minutes. When you talk to new patients, attempt to develop a professional relationship with them on the telephone by listening, responding, and giving them some valuable information that relates to their problem. Schedule the patient at the first available opportunity, or if the call is an emergency, the same day. This is why it's called medical massage therapy. Many massage therapists run their practices for their own personal convenience and don't have a service mission or philosophy. They set deliberate limits on their patient visits and hours of therapy. This mainly occurs because they are relaxation or therapeutic massage therapists working on a 60 to 90 minute per client schedule. They are therefore limited physically and mentally to the number of clients that they can see in a day or week. The medical massage therapist, because of shorter treatment times and the use of therapeutic modalities, does not share the same limitations. These limits also become psychological impediments to practice growth. By telling yourself that you can only see 15 or 20 patients per week, then that will be all the patients that you will see. Massage therapists with patient limits also routinely turn patients away with comments like, I have a two-week waiting list, do they really? Or by failing to see urgent or emergency cases the same day. The bottom line is that when a patient calls, get them in your office immediately, even if you have to extend your treatment hours for the day. 
If you cannot treat them the first day with medical massage or manual therapy, you can at least bring them in and apply a therapeutic modality and answer some of their questions. By doing this, you have begun the therapeutic relationship and gained a new patient. As previously mentioned, this is where many therapists fail to connect with potential patients. Many massage therapists direct most of their client calls to either voicemail or an answering machine. Studies show that these therapists lose most of their potential clients who simply are not comfortable talking to a machine or who move on down the Yellow Pages ads to the next available massage therapist. You will also need an answering service just like other healthcare providers do. Your patients need to be able to contact you 24-7 in case of urgent questions or an emergency. Leave instructions with your answering service that if you cannot be reached, patients are to be referred to the nearest hospital emergency room or medical center. Medical massage therapists who treat patient conditions and use therapeutic modalities such as infrared can manipulate their daily schedules to take and return patient phone calls. If an occasional patient complains about your taking a phone call, tell them, I am a medical massage therapist. I treat patients who are in pain and have emergencies. I was treating a patient when your first phone call came into the office and I answered it and your questions. The few patients that you might lose who are looking for a massage experience do not compare to the hundreds of patients that you will gain by answering the telephone yourself. Obviously, if you have a receptionist, you have solved the problem that most therapists face. If you work in a group practice, the problem can be handled, in part by sharing phone responsibilities. Whatever your approach to the telephone, it is your lifeline to patient visits. Handle it well. Remember, no one will ever represent you or your practice as well as you do. Practice Hours the key to successful marketing of any product is to meet or provide for the perceived need of the consumer. What is essential is not what you want or need, but what the patient wants and needs in care. Many massage therapists enter the massage field in response to the lure of easy money and working conditions. The statistics show that most fail to achieve either of these objectives. The medical massage therapist needs to define themselves and behave as a medical professional. This means that they need to be responsive to their patients in terms of availability. The medical massage practice needs early morning and evening hours to treat patients who need treatment before and after work. Some patients need lunch hour appointments, so the medical massage therapist may need to schedule lunch at 2 p.m. instead of 12 p.m. Some patients need weekend appointments, and so the medical massage therapist may need to be available on Saturday mornings. The point here is to create an accessible weekly schedule so that patients can make appointments and receive the treatment they need. That is, after all, how you make your living. If you are working in a group practice setting, you can share responsibilities for patient care and emergencies by rotating coverage on evenings and weekends. You can also facilitate in-office patient treatment by sharing patient treatment and the application of therapeutic modalities such as heat, cold, or soft tissue laser. Your office environment and professional image. The public often has a confused opinion about what massage therapy is. Because of this confusion, it is probably more important for the medical massage therapist to cultivate a professional image than for other better recognized healthcare professionals. In other words, we have to try harder. The medical massage office should be clean, organized, well lighted, and efficiently laid out. Avoid the new age image that is often used by relaxation massage therapists. Do not use scented candles or other aromatherapy materials which may cause allergic reactions in some patients. It is best not to play music in the treatment rooms. Music may distract you or cause you to treat to the beat of the music. Keep your personal philosophy and religious views to yourself and not on your office walls or in your patient materials. Your personal motivations for treating patients may be based on your spiritual beliefs. This is good. Just don't feel that you have to advertise your beliefs or force them on your patients. 
Your personal appearance and dress should reflect the image that you want to project as a professional medical massage therapist. Your professional uniform or clothing should be appropriate for a healthcare professional and should not be your everyday casual or sports clothing. You should create a business name and identity that is appropriate for your practice and the professionalism of medical massage therapy. You would not choose a name that may be erotically suggestive such as relaxing touch massage or a name that would be perceived as new age such as luminous hands of rainbow light. The business name that you choose should reflect the medical and clinical massage and manual therapy services that you perform. Face-to-face -face contact, the waiting room. When the patient arrives at your office, you or your receptionist should greet them like a long-lost friend. Treat the patient like you would a guest in your home. Hopefully you are a good host. Make the patient feel comfortable and secure in your office. Tell the patient that you are just finishing with your current patient, that you are on time, and that you will take them back to the treatment room in just a few minutes. Provide them with the required medical massage intake forms and ask the patient to fill the forms out while they're waiting for you. The waiting room is also the first place that you actually see the patient face to face. This is your first opportunity to evaluate the patient's physical condition as they sit, stand, or move. Does the patient appear to be in pain? Does the patient lean to one side or move abnormally? What is the patient's general appearance and physical condition? You can begin your musculoskeletal and overall assessment of the patient from your first contact with them in the waiting room. Paperwork Never let paperwork get in the way of patient care, especially on the first visit. The number one reason why patients seek medical massage is pain. Don't let a person who is in pain sit in your waiting room filling out paperwork during their potential treatment time. Once you have the patient's basic contact information, name, address, and telephone, and you know their chief complaint and the reason for seeing you, the rest of the paperwork can wait until later. If necessary, you can send some forms home with the patient to be completed there and return to your office on the next visit. In addition, once you have the patient on the treatment table, you can continue to interview them about their history, medical care, condition, and contraindications while you evaluate and treat them. Patient Flow What this presentation is really saying to you is that to be successful in practice, you need to have a coherent plan for patient care and administration and that you need to execute this plan consistently. You need a well-defined blueprint that outlines in-office patient management from phone call to payment. Successful healthcare practices, medical, dental, and chiropractic have this kind of coordinated patient management plan. It is possible to competently manage patients, communicate your professionalism, and still maintain the human characteristics that define massage therapy. Who says you can't be successful and caring at the same time? Every aspect of patient contact and communication must be outlined in writing in a patient care flowchart. What you say and how you say it to a patient must be scripted out and practiced in advance. The Treatment Table If you are a king or queen, the treatment table is your throne. Almost every important interaction that you make with a patient should be conducted on the treatment table. When the patient is on the treatment table, you have the psychological advantage, the ability to provide effective patient education and create a teachable moment for the patient. When a patient comes into your treatment room, it is for the purpose of consulting with you and receiving therapy within the scope of your medical massage practice. When the patient is fully dressed and sitting or standing, it may be difficult for you to fully communicate with the patient and to motivate the patient toward effective personal and lifestyle change. When the patient is partially disrobed, is draped, and prone on your treatment table, you have the greatest impact on their psychological and physiological state. Everything that is important in your healing relationship with the patient happens on the table. The first step is to interview the patient while you are evaluating their condition or chief complaint. 
Never take up valuable treatment time by standing and talking to a patient in the treatment room. Get the patient on the table as quickly as you can. Explain to the patient that you want to have the maximum amount of time for their therapy, so you need them on the table. Tell them that you can both treat and talk at the same time. While you are treating the patient, educate them regarding what you are doing and what you are finding. Chances are this will be the only time that anyone has actually taken the time to really tell them and show them what is wrong with them. If you find an active trigger point, apply a little pressure to the point comfortably and explain to the patient what you have found and what a trigger point is. If you find fibrosis in the tissue, explain this to the patient and tell them about how fibrosis occurs. If you find inflammation and soreness in an area, talk to the patient about the cause of arthritis. In other words, use the table time to educate the patient about their condition and what you can do for it and how you treat it. Educated patients return for care. Educated patients are loyal. Educated patients refer other patients to you. Medical massage ethics dictates that a patient's treatment time belongs to the patient. This is not your time. It is not gossip time. It is not time to talk about your personal issues or life. This is treatment time. Every moment spent talking about non-related issues shortchanges the patient's therapy. Once the patient begins to view you as a healthcare professional providing them with valuable healthcare services, you have a loyal patient for life. Conversely, if you spend treatment time in idle gossip, you have discredited your professional status with the patient and undermined your relationship. It is okay to be friendly with a patient. Just don't try to turn your patient into a friend. Many general massage therapists, especially those providing a memorized form of massage where they provide the same basic massage over and over on every patient that they see, enter the twilight zone while they're treating. We call this table trance. This is a form of self-hypnosis where the therapist has drifted off and is not really present with the patient and is not concentrating on the soft tissue findings and achieving a clinical response during the treatment. Even some medical massage therapists fall into this negative behavior pattern during treatments, especially with ongoing patients. Every moment of treatment time should be a conscious moment where the therapist is entirely focused on the patient and their care. Patients know or can sense when you are working for them or simply going through the motions. Success with patient rehabilitation, patient compliance, and ongoing patient care requires that you concentrate on your patient's care every moment of every visit. If you need a break, take one. Just don't take it while you're with a patient. Several years ago, I worked as the managing director of a psychological firm. On a couple of occasions, I had to fire psychotherapists who repeatedly fell asleep during the patient therapy sessions. Can you imagine pouring out your deepest fears and concerns while your therapist begins to snore? Can you imagine a surgeon performing surgery on you who has drifted away listening to the background music? Every time you fail to remain fully present with your patient, to educate them, to evaluate and treat according to the soft tissue findings present at that specific time, you shortchange the patient who deserves competent treatment. You shortchange yourself because you will not be as successful with your therapeutic outcomes and you will not retain as many patients as you would if you remained professionally focused on your patient. Continuing with the concept of importance of managing your patient while they're on the table, you should also explain the purpose of the therapy that you provide, the cost of the therapy, the frequency of the treatment needed for the patient's condition, and when you want the patient to return. All of this should occur while the patient is still on the table. Remember, the table is where you have control in the patient-therapist relationship. Once the patient has gotten dressed in their $1,000 suit and tie, put on their Rolex, is standing facing you eye to eye, and is on their way out the door, you will have far less influence and time to educate them regarding the importance of ongoing care. The number one reason that patients do not pursue therapy is cost.
the best way to deal with a patient concerns regarding the cost of therapy is to address the objection before it becomes one. Schedule your patients on the treatment table and not at the counter. While you are treating, and after you have educated them regarding their condition and the need for treatment, tell them that you need to see them for six more visits over the next three weeks. Tell them that at the end of the six visits, you will both mutually reevaluate their condition and improvement to determine if or what further treatment is necessary. Tell them that you will charge them $25 per visit or $150 for the six visits. Then say something like this. Today is Tuesday. I need to see you on Thursday at 2 p.m. for your next appointment. I will put your appointment in my book. Keep open appointment times for the week on a card in your pocket or on a whiteboard on your treatment room wall so that you can schedule appointments while the patient is on the table. If the patient cannot make a suggested appointment time, give them another time, but at least you are scheduling appointments. The most common scenario for many massage therapists is to turn over therapy decisions to the patient. Who's in control anyway? You, the trained professional, or the patient? Usually what happens is that the massage therapist waits until the patient gets up to the front counter to suggest another treatment, and the patient takes control and says, I'll see how I feel and give you a call. They usually never call, or they only call when the pain increases and never engage in corrective or restorative therapy. When you allow the patient to take control, you have lost control of your practice and the therapeutic relationship with the patient. This results in a weak practice with few patient visits. It is a disservice to the patient who needs therapy and to you because you need patients in order to grow and thrive as a therapist and as a business person. Patient Education The most important patient education happens on the treatment table. However, don't miss out on other subtle ways to educate your patients. You could put a DVD player in your waiting room and play patient education materials for them. Another very good and very inexpensive way to educate patients is by making your walls talk. Put up educational posters on carpal tunnel, low back pain, heel spurs, neck pain, headaches and arthritis on the clinic and treatment room walls. Patients don't know you. They don't know about you or your training and all of the conditions that you treat. So let your walls talk for you and say things that might attract other patients' visits or referrals. Another aspect of patient education and retention is by giving every patient that you see something in writing that directly relates to their problem or condition. While the patient is on the table, take an anatomical drawing, copied from a book, of the patient's treatment area. Put the patient's name and the date on the drawing. Then use colored markers to customize the drawing to match the patient's condition and your soft tissue findings. It is vitally important that every patient leaves your office after the first visit and after re-evaluations with one of these reports of findings. This is a very important patient education and retention tool, and it costs you and the patient nothing. The successful and profitable massage practice utilizes a total educational system approach to patient communication, including the telephone, the consultation or initial interview with the patient, patient education on the treatment table, individual handouts and take-home information, and waiting room DVD instruction. Patient Scheduling As already addressed, schedule your patient's next appointment time while they're still on the table. However, successful medical massage practices schedule multiple patient visits. When the patient comes out to the front counter, have their appointment card ready for them. But say this, let's go ahead and nail down all of your appointment times so that we can both plan for them, so that we can guarantee the times that you need. Then go ahead and schedule the remaining appointments. If the patient objects by saying they don't know their schedule over the next month, explain the importance of locking in their appointment times with you in advance because you are so busy and tell them that at least they will know one thing about the coming weeks, and that is when they will be with you for therapy. Cash Payment 
Now it is time to collect the money that you more than earned. Tell the patient how much. That will be $25 for today. And then turn your back on them. Do not make eye contact while you say, I'll write you a receipt. Then proceed to write them a receipt. Many massage therapists are uncomfortable with asking for and handling money in the office. Since many massage therapists work alone, they have to do everything from scheduling to collections. This method, which you need to practice until you are comfortable doing it, ensures that you will collect the money due to you at each office visit. It will prevent you from having to send out monthly billing statements and not being paid for the work that you do. Being a good therapist is not enough. There are many good massage therapists who have failed in practice because they are not good business people, and there are many bad therapists who are making money in practice because they are good business people. A successful and profitable practice requires that you are both a good therapist and a good business person. The ideas and recommendations presented here are taken from the most successful and profitable practices. What is presented here is a system of practice management, patient management, and patient care that needs to be strictly and specifically followed and utilized in your practice. From the first telephone contact and how you built your initial relationship with the patient through the first office visit and the patient treatment and education of the patient on the treatment table to the handling of the patient's questions and financial concerns, through taking charge of the therapeutic process and treatment schedule, and from the collection of the office fee, all of these aspects of your business operations must be carefully planned and executed. Just as you had to learn how to practice massage therapy and treat patient conditions, you now have to spend some time learning how to run a successful and profitable practice. Successful practices rarely happen by accident. They are planned. Remove the limits that you have placed in the way of your success and the barriers that you have placed in your own path to success. Distinguish yourself as a medical massage therapist by being successful in your practice, both with your patient outcomes and the financial success of your practice. This ends part one of this presentation. We recommend that you listen to this audio presentation more than once and outline the ideas and suggestions for your practice on a piece of paper. You should also practice and role play the various suggested patient dialogues that pertain to patient education, scheduling, and fees until you become comfortable with them and can consistently use them in your office. For further information regarding the training programs at the Blue Heron Academy of Healing Arts and Sciences, please contact the Academy at 616-285-9999 or visit them online at www.blueheronacademy.com. For information regarding the American Medical Massage Association, contact the Association at 888-375-7245 or visit the Association website at www.americanmedicalmassage.com. If you would like to receive continuing education credit for studying this CD presentation, please contact the American Medical Massage Association and the CEU form and questions will be mailed or electronically transmitted to you. The American Medical Massage Association is dedicated to furthering and promoting the education and training of medical massage therapists at a higher level than is seen in general, relaxation, spa, or cosmetic massage. To achieve this goal, the AMMA has created high-level technical training manuals, audio, video, and DVD presentations, and business forms specifically for the medical massage therapist. These products can be viewed online at the AMMA website or ordered by calling the AMMA. The AMMA also provides the highest level of professional credentialing and certification in the massage field through its two national board examinations. This is part two of a two-part presentation that addresses the specialized business issues of the medical massage therapy practice. Part one of this two-part series covered how to create an in-office system of patient care management and education that increases patient office visits, the number of patients in your practice, and your income. 
The material and information provided in this presentation is taken from lectures on business management and personal success given by Dr. Gregory Lawton at the Blue Heron Academy of Healing Arts and Sciences and for the continuing education programs of the American Medical Massage Association. Dr. Lawton teaches that success in the massage field is related to two things, incomes and outcomes. Good therapists are not necessarily successful. Therapists that are good at treating patients, outcomes, and at business, incomes, grow and develop strong and powerful practices in their own personal financial success. The Medical Massage Economic Model Inherent within the practice of medical massage therapy is the medical massage economic and financial model of office management. This practice management model is based on the medical practice model of treating patients according to their chief complaint, which is usually pain-related. Using a therapy plan which is specifically designed to treat the patient's problems and using therapeutic modalities along with manual therapy. The medical massage therapist who uses the medical massage model will treat more than one patient per hour. This practice model is effective in either a cash practice with insurance billing or a mixed cash and insurance practice. If you choose this method of operation as the financial model of your practice, you will have chosen to define your practice as a health care provider and not a relaxation or cosmetic experience. Treating more than one patient per hour. One of the most challenging issues that face massage therapists is not licensure or certification, but defining their own professional purpose. Are you a massage therapist first and foremost for the money, or are you in the profession to serve the public health and assist patients' recovery from pain and suffering? If you are a medical massage therapist, then your role is to treat patients and alleviate pain and suffering. How are you going to do that if patients cannot afford your fees? How is a patient supposed to afford an average therapy fee of $65 per visit if their condition requires two or three visits per week over several weeks? Many massage therapists never consider that they are not doing well in practice simply because people cannot afford to see them. The medical massage therapist who treats more than one patient per hour can charge less per patient visit than the therapist who provides 60 to 90 minute massage sessions. Medical massage therapists routinely charge between $15 and $25 per 30 minute office visit as compared to therapeutic massage therapists who may charge from $45 to $100 per hour. In most market areas, there are far more patients who can afford to access massage therapy treatments when they are affordable. This is especially true for the patient whose condition requires two or three treatments per week. To the medical massage therapist, whose mission is to provide health care and not recreational massage, an affordable fee schedule is an important aspect of patient retention and practice building. If the incredibly high professional attrition and turnover rates for therapeutic massage therapists are any indicator, the therapeutic massage model based on the 60 or 90 minute massage session with higher per visit rates is simply not working for the majority of new therapists entering the massage field. Another reported element of attrition in the massage field is due to burnout which may be related to the fact that many, if not most, massage therapists provide essentially the same massage session to every client that they see. The medical massage therapist who treats patients according to the patient's presenting symptoms will provide a wide variety of treatments, techniques, and procedures that varies from patient to patient, resulting in less therapist burnout. Cash or insurance Within the healthcare community, there is an ongoing debate regarding the merits of cash or insurance based practice. The answer is probably to do both, but in some states, especially where there is no state licensure, the ability to bill insurance may be a rare event. A medical massage therapist who treats 10 patients a day on a half hour schedule and with an average fee of only $20 per visit. 15 to $25 per visit, will gross $200 per day, $1,000 per week, $4,000 per month, and $48,000 per year. 
medical massage therapists who treat specific patient conditions with localized therapy as opposed to a full body massage can see 45 to 50 plus patients per week. Two of the well-hidden secrets to successful practice building are, one, building a practice is like priming a pump. The more patients that you see, the more patients you will get. And two, the main element in practice building is patient referral of new patients. Unrealistic treatment fees. Many relaxation massage therapists attempt to build their practices with high fees and will often have a very small caseload of only two or three dozen patients. This is an unhealthy practice in that this practice has too few patients overall and contributes to therapist burnout, if from nothing else than the boredom of seeing the same few patients over and over again. The therapist in this example has collected a small number of patients who will not take responsibility for their own healing process, but rather depend upon the therapist for continual maintenance care. This type of practice usually hovers around 16 to 24 patient visits per week, and until the practice begins to suffer an inevitable slowdown, the therapist may think that they're doing well. These therapists have poor practice building skills and are seduced by the short-term income that they achieve with fewer patients and higher rates. Often these therapists are simply part-time dabblers in massage therapy, and it is within this group that the higher levels of attrition and dropout are seen. The healthy and growing massage practice will maintain a fairly constant level of 300 or more active patients that are in various stages of treatment, from acute care to occasional maintenance treatment. The In-Office Patient Management Plan the professional medical massage therapist with a large successful cash practice will have a patient management plan that will include these office procedures. Will maintain a professional and efficient telephone answering and patient scheduling plan. Will present a professional and efficient office environment. Will thoroughly educate patients while they are in the office and on the treatment table will take control of the patient visit and develop a management plan for each patient, will schedule the patient while they are on the treatment table and will direct the patient regarding when and how often they will return for treatment, will handle patient objections by explaining the treatment, fees, and total cost of care and length of time of care before the patient even asks, will schedule multiple visits for care on the patient's first visit to the office, will use patient education methods to get patient referrals, will provide each patient with a simple drawing and notes that explain the patient's condition and the problem on the first visit, will maintain a results-oriented practice that achieves a clinical response during each patient visit, will have efficient collection of treatment fees at the end of each visit. Developing a Market Plan the medical massage therapist who is building a large cash practice needs to identify their target market in order to narrow the market down to a manageable size and develop a marketing plan for educating the consumers within that market. One way to accomplish this is to first determine the market you wish to attract and then determine the method you will use to reach this market. For example, if you wish to attract school teachers, you need to identify the advertising opportunities in school newsletters or school fundraising events that will consistently and over a period of time present your message. Another method is to purchase a mailing list for teachers or any other group within a specific geographical location. You can purchase these lists from companies for any group, area, or demographic configuration you can think of. Marketing is a process, not an event. Develop an ongoing marketing strategy and leave it in place. One mistake that massage therapists make in their advertising is to use terms or buzzwords that mean something to them or other massage professionals but are meaningless to the consumer. Successful massage marketing means finding out what the consumer wants and giving it to them. Patients seek massage therapy because they are in pain. They have had massage therapy before and need an ongoing relationship with their massage therapist. They have a health care problem and are looking for an alternative to drugs or surgery. 
They are looking for improved physical performance at work or during leisure activities. They are interested in promoting their personal well-being. The success of the cash practice is based on the consumer's perception of affordable fees and value for the services provided. Patients who have experienced the typical 60-minute massage session can easily be educated and converted to the medical massage model once they have had the opportunity to experience a therapy-specific treatment that addresses the main reasons that they are seeking care. Many massage patients have been frustrated by inexperienced massage therapists who do not address their treatment needs, lack the education to either understand or to explain to the patient the nature of the patient's problem, or who make the patient's condition worse through techniques that increase or provoke pain in patients. When patients experience improvement in their chief complaint, perceive that the massage therapist is competent and well-educated and feel that they have been charged a fair rate for treatment, they are motivated to continue a long-term relationship with the therapist. If a patient asks for an orange, don't give them an apple. Many massage therapists simply do not listen to the patient and do not work to meet the patient's needs and expectations or have failed to gain the knowledge and techniques needed to adapt to various patient needs and circumstances. The One-Visit Syndrome Many massage therapists operate one-visit practices. That is, they continually see patients only once and have few patients reschedule visits. This situation is a symptom of poor massage technique and patient management. Some massage therapists think that massage therapy is a group of techniques used on a patient, and so they practice technique, and the patient's problem is expected to respond to the techniques they have learned. In fact, the patient's condition and symptoms should determine the techniques and procedures used to achieve a clinical response in the patient. Massage therapists that collect weekend certificates in technique and use these techniques on patients often fail to achieve clinical results in the patient's conditions. Patients are rarely impressed by multiple certificates hanging on the wall if the therapist cannot successfully treat their condition and meet their expectations of effective care and relief. Define yourself and your practice. The best way to establish a cash medical massage practice is to set your treatment standards and time schedule and stick to it. If a patient wants a relaxation massage, refer them to someone who does that. By defining yourself and your practice, you are assuring your success. The surest way to fail is to attempt to do and be everything by providing both relaxation and medical massage. If you are attempting to convert an existing therapeutic massage practice to a medical massage practice, you should use the therapeutic massage treatment time to evaluate patient problems and to reschedule the patient for a 30-minute medical massage visit. Say to the patient, you have restricted movement in your right shoulder and signs of inflammation. I treat those problems with medical massage therapy every day. If you could return in two days for a $20, 30-minute medical massage treatment, I am certain I can help you with this problem. Then say, I have an appointment available for you on Thursday this week at 10 a.m. I'll put you in my book. Gradually convert as many of your patients as possible to the medical massage method. And if you want a total medical massage practice, Simply explain to your patients that your advanced training in medical massage and increased caseload makes it impossible for you to provide relaxation massage and ask them if they would like to remain with you as a medical massage patient or be referred to someone else. The key to developing a successful cash-based medical massage practice is by having affordable fees, achieving measurable clinical results, maintaining patient control and management, educating your patients, and demonstrating your confidence in what you do through your professional demeanor and practice control. Keys to success in business are centered around meeting the perceptions of the patient and providing a service they understand and value. Other factors to success in the business of massage include maintaining a low overhead and maximizing your income. The new therapists starting out in the medical massage field should charge less than their competition and work harder than anyone else. 
You can always raise your fees and change your treatment procedures after you have built a successful practice and have a waiting list of patients that want to schedule appointments with you. It is a free market. Use it. As the ongoing debate continues regarding medical, relaxation, spa, or cosmetic massage, the truth is that massage therapy is experiencing a boom in its growth, and the number of patients or clients who get massage is increasing annually, whether as a form of relaxation therapy, spa therapy, or as treatment for a personal health care problem. The consumer market will decide who succeeds, and competent therapists will thrive. There is a significant need for musculoskeletal health care based on hands-on therapy and not machines. The medical massage therapist or someone trained in medical massage are the only professionals trained to provide this care to a public that is increasingly conscious of the need for medical massage and looking to find a qualified therapist to receive care from. This ends part two of this two-part presentation. We recommend that you listen to this audio presentation more than once and outline the ideas and suggestions for your practice on a piece of paper. You should also practice and role play the various suggested patient dialogues that pertain to patient education, scheduling, and fees until you become comfortable with them and can consistently use them in your office. For further information regarding the training programs at the Blue Heron Academy of Healing Arts and Sciences, please contact the Academy at 616-285-9999 or visit them online at www.blueheronacademy.com.